This little guy is a Zigbee presence detection sensor specifically the Sonoff SNZB-06P, and it's completely different from this, a PIR motion sensor, specifically the Akara Zigbee motion and light sensor. Both of them do detect motion, both even have ambient light sensors, but they work completely differently, and I'd argue that one of them is considerably better than the other. Let me explain how these both work, and why you want, might want either, and actually how to set this one up too. I'll start with the regular motion sensor. You're likely already familiar with these, whether it's in this sort of like smart home formats, or the more commercial ones you'll find up on walls in bathrooms and cupboards and things. Basically, you move and they normally turn a light on and then turn it off after a certain amount of time after they've stopped detecting motion. It's pretty simple. The way they work is actually really cool. You'll likely want to watch Alec from Technology Connections video for more detail, but in short, the PIR in the name stands for Passive Infrared. And basically in here is a little crystal and a chip with two sets of those crystals. The semi-transparent bit of plastic that's always on the front is actually a lens that focuses infrared light onto that sensor and those crystals. As those crystals heat up, both from just ambient temperature and from the infrared waves the hot bod like yourself emits, they also emit a tiny amount of energy which the chip they're attached to can detect. And here's the neat thing. Only one of those crystals is exposed to the infrared light itself. So if both of the crystals heat up, then that's just an ambient temperature change. But if only the one that's exposed to infrared light heats up, well, then it knows that it's you walking by. Now, the downsides to this sort of, you know, design, this sort of sensor, is mostly in the latency between when it first sees you and when it actually triggers. If you've ever noticed that it takes some time between you first walking into the room and actually turning your light on, well, that's often because the crystal has to physically heat up and then it can detect that change. The other catch is also to do with motion. Once you're, say, sat on the sofa, sitting still, the sensor acclimatizes to the new heat level. Motion is what's needed, hence the name motion sensor. That means even if you have a motion sensor like this in, say, your living room, to turn your lights on when it's dark enough, if you have it set to turn them off again, well, it's going to leave you in the dark once you sit still. That isn't ideal. So what's different with this one, a presence detector? Well, despite this looking remarkably similar with his own clear dome lens looking thing, this works completely differently. This uses radio waves. This one in particular uses 5.8 gigahertz waves, although some use more like 24 gigahertz or 60 gigahertz to detect even the tiniest of motion. This is literally radar for your home. There are a few benefits to this, as well as some drawbacks with this sort of design. The benefits are pretty clear. This is, there's basically no latency here between it detecting motion and it reporting it, especially to something like Home Assistant, so it's much faster and just generally more responsive. The other major benefit is that because it's detecting presence, or well, really, it's detecting even the movement of, like, your chest from breathing. Well, your lights shouldn't turn themselves off when you're sat watching TV. The drawbacks are mostly to do with false detections, as due to this being so sensitive, even something like a fan on in the room being left on, or even just, like, a gust of wind through the window that kind of moves your curtains a bit, that can be enough to trigger it. Luckily, most of these sorts of presence detection sensors offer sensitivity calibration, so you can normally tune that sort of thing out. As for how to set this one up, it's remarkably simple, assuming you've already got something like Home Assistant and Zigbee, Zigbee set up, and videos in the cards above if you want to know more about how I've set it up, and guides and all that. You just pair it like you would any other Zigbee device, and then set up an automation for when the occupation state becomes occupied, and another for when it becomes clear. It's spot on for accuracy, although I would mention that the built-in light sensor is pretty annoying. 
It's a fixed value that just changes between light and dark, and you can't control how light or dark it has to be to trigger that. And for me, it triggers way, way too late. I'd like to be able to make it turn on my lights when it's just a bit brighter in the room than it's set for, but that isn't possible, at least with this sensor. There are plenty of other sensors like this on the market though, including an Akara one, which even does multi-person and multi-zone detection, which is incredible. Although, you do pay for that privilege. This Sonoff one was under £30, whereas the Akara one is more like 80 Perhaps you get what you pay for though. Anyway, if you want to be able to walk into a room and have your lights turn on, I'd recommend a presence sensor like this over a motion sensor, unless it's something like a cupboard where you're you know, only going to be in there for a few minutes rather than actually staying in the room. They're just so easy to use and, in my experience, are more reliable and more useful, especially for rooms, like I said, you plan on continuously occupying. This Sonoff one does work well, even if the lights of a sensor isn't quite tuned to my tastes, but it does have a setting to maintain the presence for up to 60 seconds, as in it will keep your lights on for up to 60 seconds after you leave the room, which is pretty handy. I will leave a link to this sensor in the description if you want to get one yourself, and if you haven't already, check out the whole smart home series that I've got up already. There is plenty to choose from there. Of course, if you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Check out plenty of other videos, including the smart home playlist on the end cards, and that's kind of it. Like I said, I will leave a link to this in the description, and uh, otherwise, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next video.